Hello and welcome. When you were young, did you dream about being able to fly like a bird? You may have even climbed onto the roof to jump off wearing your Superman cape. Bet you didn't know too much about gravity then and how to overcome it. In Greek mythology, Icarus and his father attempted to escape from Crete by means of wings that his father constructed from feathers and wax. That didn't end too well for Icarus. The sight of soaring birds is a wondrous thing. Jealous, earthbound man wondered just what it would take to fly like that. Without an engine, that would be a very light but strong aircraft with a propeller powered by a slim and muscular person sustaining huge and continuous effort. These human-powered craft, capable of sustained flight, have been built and flown. First attempts were just a year after the Wright brothers achieved powered flight in 1903. Those craft that required assistance to get airborne, such as a catapult, have been discredited as not being true human-powered flight. In 1961, Derek Piggott managed to fly 650 metres using muscle power to launch. A week later, the de Havilland Aircraft Company supported John Wimpenny in his attempt when he managed 908 metres. In 1972, the Woodford Essex Aircraft Group's Jupiter, designed and built by Chris Roper, piloted by John Potter, flew an astounding 1,239 metres. In 1977, the Gossamer Condor II flew the first figure eight, a distance of 2,172 metres, winning the first Kremer Prize of £50,000. It was built by Dr Paul McCready and piloted by amateur cyclist and hang glider pilot Brian Allen. Although slow, cruising at only 18 kilometres per hour, it achieved that speed with 0.26 kilowatts of effort. A professional cyclist can maintain 0.43 kilowatts for 20 minutes or 0.39 kilowatts for one hour. There is a trade-off for body weight and power. The power-weight ratio is a better gauge of performance. This is body weight in kilograms divided by average power output in watts. A lighter pilot is ideal, but this will be at the sacrifice of power output. The second Kremer Prize of £100,000 was won in 1979, again by Paul McCready, when Brian Allen flew McCready's Gosma Albatross from England to France. He achieved a straight distance of 35.82 kilometres in 2 hours 49 minutes. A week after the cross-channel flight of Gosma Albatross, a student-led team at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology achieved first flight on their Chrysalis aircraft, which demonstrated full control and was flown by 44 different pilots, including the first female pilot to power a HPA. In 1984, the third Crema Prize of £20,000 for speed went to the MIT design team for flying their Monarch B aircraft on a triangular 1.5 kilometer course in under three minutes, averaging 32 kilometers per hour. Over the next four years, the MIT group continued to evolve their designs with the Monarch and Monarch B aircraft succeeded by three follow-on designs, the Light Eagle and two MIT Daedalus aircraft, the Daedalus 87 and Daedalus 88. The current distance record of 115.11 km is recognised by the Federation Aeronautic International and was achieved on the 23rd of April 1988. This flight was piloted by a Greek pilot who flew from Ictyon in Crete to Santorini in a Daedalus 88. The first human-powered passenger flight occurred on the 1st of October 1984 when Holger Rochelt carried his sister Katrine in Musculaire 1. People have great fun constructing gliders and attempting to take off and glide from a standing start. They launch from a tower above water 
and the winner is the one who glides the furthest distance. Most just fall vertically with their flimsy craft collapsing around them. Some achieve flight, if only for a short time. For me, I look at it like this. Birds don't wear clothes and go to work in a car, and I don't wear feathers and fly off a building. Thank you for watching.